Well, good day, everybody. This is Joe. Welcome back to the channel. And it is Sunday afternoon. It's a beautiful autumn day in Albuquerque. I should be outside enjoying the weather, but I'm doing some practice uh, tinkering around with my large format 4x5 Intrepid, the Fujinon 135 f5.6 lens, and a little scene here that I'm shooting. This is a little ceramic owl figure. And of course I have the Intrepid set up on the tripod, the legs kind of splayed out like that. And what I'm doing is I'm doing some more test uh, exposures using the fairly new reversal process uh, that I've been working with. This is the citric acid hydrogen peroxide reversal process. And just seeing how long my used batch of citric acid and my used batch of peroxide are going to last to see if there's any problems and how I'm going to mitigate those. So kind of a little experimental day with the reversal process. Stay tuned. Well, I'm using my standard little setup here for 4x5. I have a paper developer. This is used paper developer. It's about a week or two old. A rinse bath. I had some fixer in here. I have some fixer in here. And I put the fixer in here just in case um, I wanted to do some additional fixing of the positive uh, print after it's reversed and de finished developing. But I really think going forward I'm not going to be using much fixer because I think all the silver halide in the paper has been exposed and or bleached out. There's no unexposed silver halides left so there's really no thing to, reason to worry about the image getting darker over time. At least that's my feeling. Um, on the right side here is the citric acid solution. This was about a week old, maybe two weeks old, and I did add another little spoon, a teaspoon of citric acid in here. And then this is the peroxide solution. So this is from this bottle of 35 percent hydrogen peroxide. It's food grade quality. Got it at a health food store. They do this peroxide therapy thing. People mix a little bit with water and drink it. I don't know about that. I've been using this peroxide uh, for the reversal test this last month and what's going to happen here of course is in the bleaching step I'm bleaching out exposed silver out of from the first exposure and the first development so silver is going to be coming into solution in this peroxide as it gets used so it's going to be kind of like the way fixer gets exhausted gets saturated with silver and there's a point where you have to discard your fixer well the same thing is going to happen with the peroxide and I haven't really characterized when that happens so I'm kind of playing around with that and then I have a little rinse down here and I'm doing some final rinses or was doing some final rinses right there well right now I have three test exposures and they're outside in the front yard rinsing under my tree just to save water you know I have to water my tree anyway so you might as well rinse your prints and water the tree at the same time so let's go out and take a look at that shall we yes a beautiful day out here Na -na -na. beautiful autumn day look the flowers are still going all right well here is my little garden hose Right, so this is the first print I did. The exposure or the composition is a little bit uh, further back than I wanted. And there's just a little hint of some dark splotches in the white area at the background. Uh, kind of not, kind of brownish tone. And I was seeing that um, when I was experimenting with this process quite a while ago. Here is the second one, a closer one, and you might be able to see this kind of amber staining or discoloration around the owl. Um, and again, I'm not really sure why, as he drops it in the gravel, but that's why we're rinsing it. And then the third one is essentially the same exposure as the second one, but I selenium toned the print. Selenium toning got rid of a lot of that staining. It's still there slightly, but it's made the the uh, shadow detail warmer. And of course, it's going to make this more archival because it's substituting silver oxide with silver selenide, which is more archival. So that's an interesting finding. And of course, you probably can't see this very well because of all the glare from the wet paper. So I'm going to let this finish rinsing for a while, and then we'll squeegee dry them 
and take a look at them under a more controlled lighting situation. So I'm using the Freestyle Photos Arista brand grade 2 resin coated paper with the semi-matte finish. And I'm metering my scene with this Iconic L308. It's a modern light meter and it's kind of a uh, shutter speed priority light meter only. Uh, it only goes down to ISO 3. So what I do is I have it set to ISO 3. I meter the subject itself with a reflective metering like this. And then, so example is the last meter reading I took, I set the f-stop to 5.6, which is the lens, the Fujinon lens wide open. And then I'm going to set it to three stops more exposure. So one, two, three. So instead of four seconds, it's 30 seconds. And also, <laughs> because I had racked the focus of the camera further out to get a close-up focus, I'm no longer focused at infinity, so I uh, did a little swag, uh, a scientific wild-ass guess uh, of an additional exposure. I made it 45 seconds instead of 30, just to compensate for the bellows extension factor, because my f 5.6 is really f whatever, f8 or something. So. Okay, so uh, precautions when you're working with this peroxide process. Uh, I'm using 35% strength, which is pretty high. You can also use like the 12% peroxide that you get at beauty supply places for, for bleaching in the hair coloring or permanence or whatever. Anyways, the 3% or 1.5% drugstore peroxide won't work in this process. You gotta use a stronger solution. Peroxide is a strong oxidizer. I'm, I was using uh, gloves trying to be careful, trying to be careful with my, my dripping, my waste. If I wipe uh, some peroxide on paper towel, don't wipe it on something else, all that, right? But look, I still have a white spot right here on this finger <laughs> from uh, getting a little drop of it on there. It doesn't hurt, but you don't want to oxidize your tissues your, because it's sort of like burning them, slow burning. You don't want that. Be careful. Safety. Also eyes. Make sure you wear glasses. You don't want a, a drop of peroxide in your eyes. Do not want that. Alright, I think we've rinsed enough. I'm going to just set up a little cutting board that I use to squeegee my prints and just lay these things out in roughly the order that, yeah, the order that I shot them. All right. This one probably should be like that. This is the first print. It was exposed for, I believe it was 30 seconds. And it has this kind of warm grayish, almost an amber splotchiness around the highlights. The shadows don't seem to have it. This uh, second one was a minute exposure and it's even more pronounced here. This is very pronounced a little bit along here, but you can definitely see it right here. And then uh, this is the same exposure. Well, this is like 45 seconds, a little bit lower exposure instead of a full minute. Um, but I went and selenium toned it, and I really love the tones on this picture. And it took away a lot of that staining. I had a, actually a fingerprint right here, which was interesting. It must have been the acids in my oils were keeping the citric acid peroxide process from fully working right there but anyways there's still a little bit up here there are some a couple tiny little scratches and I was trying to be very careful about how I uh, handled this and I was only handling it in one corner with rubber coated tongs so I suspect that scratching might have been from the paper was already pre-cut and I had it in my bag of uh, my uh, pack of paper 
and maybe the corners of another piece of paper there's some strips of photo paper in there maybe the corners of one of those was scratching the uh, paper as it was being handled so maybe this peroxide process might make this paper a little more sensitive to showing scratches so you have to be careful with it but I sure love the tones on this there is still a little splotchiness of dark staining around there and, and that brings the point of what's causing that staining and that's a good question I suspect it's because my peroxide is probably getting exhausted slowly either oxidizing or or losing oxidation I guess or silver is building up in the solution so I might have to go this week uh, and buy another bottle so these two prints were given nearly the same exposure this was I believe a minute at f5.6 this was 45 seconds at f5.6 and uh, the difference really before this one was selenium toned these two looked essentially the same but uh, this one the highlights lightened up considerably and a lot of this kind of amber colored grayish modeling kind of went away I mean you can still see evidence of it but it's a lot less this right down here in the middle and the bottom edge was a fingerprint from me handling it with moist fingers Anyways, it definitely improved the highlights, and I really like that. So if I could get the modeling problem figured out by what I think is caused by is just exhausted, partially exhausted peroxide, when I get that figured out, I think uh, the selenium toning is going to be the standard way I go forward with this, because I really like what it does. It removes that kind of gray haze. Even without the, the, the amber modeling, this lighter gray color is kind of the basic highlight that you have you don't have anything much brighter than that and so this definitely lightens it up which I like now um, also the scratches that was an artifact of uh, in the rinsing I had a sharp plastic stir stick so the emulsion is much softer um, because of this process I suspect is because of the uh, action of the bleaching agent it probably has something to do with affecting the adhesion of the silver gelatin emulsion against the backing of, of plastic resin coating of the paper. But I really like this picture. It's a beautiful picture. So then once I did a test on this uh, first exposure, I did a test to figure out why this scratch happened. And right here, and I found out it was my yellow plastic stir stick. I went and took the paddle of that stir stick and, and practiced uh, scratching it and I was able to scratch off a lot of the emulsion more so the highlights you can see here the shadow detail along the edge of the border it does come off somewhat but the highlights especially come off more so which indicates to me that it is related to the bleaching action the highlights would have had more bleaching on them than the shadows so anyways uh, that's a finding we got to be careful with the emulsion and this uh, particular image because this was processed first you'll see there's less of that modeling going on you notice that amber kind of modeling isn't quite there so apparently my peroxide wasn't quite as exhausted when I first did this and you can see this kind of gray background that's as light as the highlights get um, unless you selenium tone them and then they do lighten up considerably so if I was to stick this print in selenium toner I would expect these highlights to be much brighter more closer to what this is right here so these three prints that I made today they were exposures from 30 seconds to a minute in shaded daylight with the uh, Fujinon lens wide open at f5.6 and that raises a good point that in that kind of light, which is kind of soft and it is a pretty good kind of light for portraits, natural lighting for portraits, it's really virtually impossible to make portraits with those lengthy exposure times. Just keeping someone perfectly still for 30 seconds is just unreasonable. And so if this uh, process is going to be used for portrait, it's going to be more of a high intensity electronic strobe kind of illumination in a studio to make the exposure time short enough to where the subject doesn't blur because of motion. And that's kind of unfortunate because I was hoping 
to be able to use this reversal process in the Afghan box camera project to make one-of-a-kind images that I could just directly process and give to somebody rather than having to re-photograph it. But that's fine. Uh, we'll do whatever we have to do with it, but uh, it is interesting. It is very slow in uh, this reversal process and reminds me a lot above uh, the early wet plate collodion and even daguerreotype type of processes that, that were also about the same speed. So I've tried to work with this new process, new to me. I think it's fairly new in the world of photography, the citric acid hydrogen peroxide reversal thing. I'm trying to learn some of the things about it. Uh, and other people also out there are also learning about the new process. And one of the things that I remember seeing when I first started this uh, over a year ago was this kind of dark grayish kind of brownish stain that that happens on top of the highlights and it's kind of a mottled irregular kind of a stain I didn't have any of that when I did this like a week or two ago maybe two weeks ago I didn't have any of this show but now it's the same batch of peroxide of course now there's more silver being dissolved in solution and maybe the oxidation of the peroxide is being diminished by other contaminants whatever so i suspect part of this may be due to the bleaching action is just being reduced in effectiveness so i'm going to go off this week and try to buy a fresh batch of peroxide and try to see with the same uh, dilution of developer, the same used citric acid solution to see if what difference it makes. Use the same processing times. But I was quite surprised at the um, difference between doing this with and without selenium toning. I thought the differences with selenium toning were dramatic. It definitely heightened the highlights, kind of removed a lot of that grayish haze out of the highlights and of course it did this thing that selenium toning does which is it makes the shadows more warm toned so it's a wonderful image I thought really love this now there are a couple artifacts and when I was in the process of rinsing these and examining it as they were rinsing boy they were nice and clean and finally when I got down to the point of the final rinse I had put the rectangular container of water that had these prints in it, I put it in my darkroom sink and I put some of my tongs in there with it to try to rinse as the prints were doing the final rinse. And <laughs> when I did that, I ended up with a big scratch on the front of this one that hasn't been slammed toned, actually two scratches. And the, the one that I really like also has a couple extra little scratches in it. So I started investigating that. I took each tong and carefully rubbed it on the highlights of the prints and I didn't see any problems but then I went to do the same thing with that yellow stir stick with that flat paddle type end and man I scratched the heck out of the emulsion and the first shot that I took today this test shot that was a wider angle than I wanted um, it had a really bad scratch right there and so I decided to experiment with it down in the corner and as you can see man I can scratch off the emulsion pretty darn easy with that plastic stir stick I've never seen this phenomenon with RC prints processed normally in normal print chemistry so what I suspect is happening is the bleaching action is softening up the adhesion of the gelatin emulsion upon the plastic resin backing. That's So you have paper, plastic resin on top of that, and then you have a silver gelatin emulsion on top of that. I think there is an adhesion thing that's being softened due to the bleaching action. So it's something to think about when you are processing and especially handling these after they have been processed but they're still wet. Make sure you're very careful with them. They are fragile. Uh, the other thing I'm going to be doing eventually is probably doing the same round of testing but using fiber-based paper, which does not have the resin coating on top of the paper. I don't know if gelatin sticks better or worse to directly to the paper, the fiber paper, versus to a resin plastic coating. We'll find out if it is more susceptible or less susceptible to staining. One problem with using fiber-based paper, however, is going to be the fact that whatever chemistry we use is going to soak into the fibers, the very fibers of the paper itself, so it might necessitate a much longer rinse time to 
get the paper to an archival state so you've, you don't have any residual chemistry in the fibers that might degrade the paper over time. And I don't know what the peroxide is going to do to the paper fibers directly, so we'll find out. But in any event, uh, another little round of testing, another further advancement. I think the big lesson for today was selenium toning these prints is just brings them out so much better. It removes a lot of that mottled staining if your peroxide, which I think is what's causing it, is uh, getting to be aged. And of course the warm tone. And don't forget the benefit of selenium toning is archivability. Another little report about the citric acid hydrogen peroxide reversal process. Hope you guys enjoyed this. And this little owl is really a neat test subject. I'm going to have to do more tests with the same subject. Well, until next time, this is Joe Van Cleve. Stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.